with us. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your plan and purpose in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we bless you, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We are here to worship the King and the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We are here to bow before you, O oh Lord, to say, you are our Lord. You are our Master. You are the Lord of all, Jesus. You alone deserve our praise. You alone deserve our worship. You alone deserve our prayer, O oh God. We thank you. We thank you, we love you, and we bless you. But you never leave us, not forsake us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for ministering to us. We exalt you, King. Let the King be worshipped. Let the King be worshipped. Let the King be worshipped. He alone is worthy of praise. He alone is worthy to open the scrolls. Thank God for Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for giving yourself to us. Thank you for how beautiful you are. How wonderful. Thank you for making us wonderfully and fearfully. Making us in your image, oh Father. We bless you for that. Lord, in spite of our shortcomings, in spite of our failures, in spite of us not getting it together, you still love us. Yes, Lord. You still care for us. Your plan never changes. Yes, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Lord, for that. We are humbly bowing before you as, the, as your body, as your believers, as your brothers, as your sisters, as your family, Father. Thank you for your faithfulness in our lives. All of the days that we have walked through, you've been with us. You walked us through, Father. There is no mountain that we couldn't climb, Father. There is no valley that you didn't, didn't help us come up. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. We are here to boldly declare, yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with us. Yes, God. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with us. We thank you, Lord, for you are with us, for we are, you are with our children, our children's children, our families, O oh God, our nation, our land, our people, O oh God. We need you, Jesus. We need you now. We need you now more than ever before. Thank you. Thank you for your flow. Thank you for your correction. Thank you for your direction. Thank you, Lord. We invite you in here. We invite you to come plow us through, God. Plow through this land. Plow through the political system of this land. Plow, oh God, the discrimination, the differentiation. Oh, God, the... the the immorality, oh Father, we, come, we ask you that you would have your way. Forgive us our sins, our trespasses, oh God. Sanctify us for your will. Sanctify us for your purpose. Let your holiness reign. Lord, we humbly bow before you for today, Lord, our schools, we place them into your hands. We are about to send our children there, Father. We seek your blessing upon those children, God. The love of God surrounding them, oh God. There are so many voices that are out there, so many eyes that are out there to pray upon our children, God. We stand against them. We rebuke those voices. We rebuke those eyes in the name of Jesus. Our children, God's children are not for sale. Yes. We bind and we, uh, we bind all those forces that are trying to steal, kill, and destroy our children, our school systems, oh God. Purge those systems in the name of Jesus. All those demonic ideologies, all those ideologies, 
We rebuke them all. We seek your presence. We seek your power to be restored back in our schools. That when we have, when we send our children, they will grow up in your wisdom, oh God. Not in the wisdom of man, not in the fear of man, but in the fear of our Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Every voice, every little voice I claim, Father. Every little voice right here, right here, right now. In Seminole County, in Orange County, in Lake County, in Volusia County, in the state of Florida, in every state of the United States of America. Every county, every school board, every voice that is exalting itself against you. We rebuke those voices, God. Our children belong to you, Lord Jesus. Our children belong to you. We see each child with the blood of Jesus. Protect them. Ignite them with a new fire. Ignite them with a new revelation that they are drawn closer to you, not to any of these man-made ideologies, not to any of these sinful ideologies. All the ideology of transgenderism be broken and be dead in the name of Jesus. Amen. It shall not prevail. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, let the king, let the king reign. Let the king reign. Thank you, Jesus. We commit them into your hands, our children, God. They be fed by you spiritually, mentally, physically. Financially, every aspect of their lives be protected by you, God. Right this moment, we also take time to pray for all those kids, all those children that have been abducted by these monsters, Father. Driving them into sex slave and sex trade, driving them into all these awful things, my God. Little children. God, I call forth your protection upon them. We stand against those iron walls. We stand against those powers of, of dark forces. We stand against those things, those oppressive spirits, those demonic oppressive spirits, the people that are falling into it. God, we bind those minds and we release life, but they will let them go. Let the children go, the voice from the heaven. Let my children go. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We bless you, we honor you, and we praise you. God, we thank you for your faithfulness in our personal lives. In everything that we are doing, you kept us faithful, Father. We thank you for that. As we have entered into this new month, we expect new mercies, new grace that would be bestowed upon us, Father. The newness of your love, the newness of your plan will be falling down us and following us. Your goodness and your mercy shall follow us. We declare that upon us for this month, there shall not be any lack in, our, in my household. Come on, church, boldly declare it. There shall not be any lack in my household. Oh, we thank you for that, Lord. Meet all of our needs. According to your word, according to your promise, according to your riches. Spiritually, mentally, physically, financially, relationally, marriages being restored, my God. Life coming into marriages. Life coming into relationships. Abandoned relationships are being restored for your glory. Thank you, Lord. We partake in this communion knowing full well that you are the Lord of our lives. Thank you for you have already walked into this, walked into our future, and you call it beautiful. You are our beautiful Savior. Let the beauty come and reign into our lives, into all aspects of our life. You are giving beauty for our ashes. You are giving beauty for our ashes. You are giving beauty for our ashes, O oh Lord. 
Every dead thing is being resurrected that is coming back to life. Lord, we thank you for that. We pray for the pulpit of this nation, Father, that it will be restored back to preach your gospel, to preach your word, to declare your power. Let the pulpit be restored. Let the pulpit be restored. The pulpit belongs to the Lord. Pulpit in the, um, in the American church belongs to the Lord. And his, uh, his praises will be heard. The altar of the Lord is being restored for your glory. We thank you. We bless you and we honor you. We, we participate in this communion. Knowing that you got everything covered for us. Thank you for the covenant. Thank you for your blessing in our lives. If you have your covenant elements with you, communion elements with you, go ahead and start opening them so we can participate in this. How many of you believe Jesus is the most beautiful? Woo. Woo. Praise God. Amen. He is turning our life. Any ashes that we might have in our life, he is turning them into beauty. Amen? Amen. I ha I'm so thankful that he is the one that has that power. I'm expecting beautiful month for us. Amen. I'm expecting God's beauty to transcend into our lives. Amen. Our imperfections being covered in his beauty. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I am excited that this month is about to bring some great things. Yes. Greater glory is upon us, church. Yes. Greater glory is for us. Amen. And we shall rejoice in the name of the Lord. Amen. We shall rejoice in the Lord and declare that He is faithful Amen. and He is beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Lord, we participate in this communion knowing by your stripes we were healed. Yes, God. Amen. Amen. If anybody is not feeling well in their body, anybody that we know that is not feeling well, right now we speak healing to those bodies because by His stripes we were healed. Yes, Thank you, Lord. We are one body. We are united with the body of Christ. And we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Lord, have your way. We participate in this communion knowing the blood of Jesus is our eternal covenant. Thank you, Lord, for making that covenant with us. Through the blood of the most holy sacrifice. Have your way. That you would be covering us in the present, in the past, into the future. No matter where we go, we are all covered by you and covered in you. We thank you, Lord, for the power of your blood. We come under that blood protection. We come under that blood covering. We come under that blood outpouring into our lives where we are sanctified. Our sin is being forgiven in the righteousness of God. The gift of righteousness. Have your way, Lord. Let us partake in this communion knowing God's got us. Yes. We are doing this with Him. We are not doing this alone. We are doing with God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord.
let us continue to sow, for we can never outgive God. I challenge every one of you, increase your commitments in giving. You know why? I, not because we need more money, but because God wants to pour more into our lives. God wants to pour more into our lives. Let things come to your life that you have not heard, not you have read about it. So as the worship time is going on, I invite you to come participate in that sowing as well. Whether it is with your tithes, with your offerings, yes. honor Him, worship Him. Yes. It's an opportunity that we can boldly give to God. Thank you, Jesus. Giving is an act of boldness. Let us not do it out of fear and lose the power of giving. Amen? Yes. Amen. Father God, we thank you for giving us an opportunity to sow. We bring our tithes, we bring our offerings, knowing you are our source. Multiply our seed, Father. Multiply what we are, multiply what we are giving, that we may become exceedingly abundantly above all that we can think or imagine. That we will continue to be a blessing to many, Father. That we, your riches, will be outpouring into our lives. That we will be outpouring your riches into many. Hallelujah. For your glory, God, this hand is blessed to be a blessing. This hand will multiply. Yes, God. Thank you, Oh, Jesus. glory be to you, God. Everything we touch shall prosper. Oh, we thank you. We thank you. The grounds that we are gaining, the momentum that we have for us, the glory we have for us. We Amen. bless you for it. We thank you. We release our seeds by faith. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Jesus. I'd like to welcome everybody again this morning to the Fusion Church. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed taking communion and fellowshipping with us today. We want to remind you, whether you're in person or watching online, that you can send in your prayer requests. 407-490-4019 as we prepare for Jonathan to come help lead us in Psalm 91 this morning. We pray that you would recite this, not just from memory, but from our spirits with the power of his word. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's go ahead and declare Psalms 91 with the boldness of from our hearts. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the prayer's pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day. Know of the pestilence that walks in darkness, know of the destruction that lays waste any day. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not Only with your eyes shall you look and see the Lord of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, he is my refuge, even the most high of your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague near you. For you shall give us angels charge over you, to be in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the unknown and the serpent, you shall trample them. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. He will be in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Thank you, Jesus. God is great. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you again for the tuning in, joining in, and so the way it is. <laughs> um, God is always doing great things, and, and at the same time, when God is doing great things, we also need to uh, not forget the fact that uh, the devil is also busy with us. Mm -hmm. The devil is also busy with uh, what all is going on all around us. He has his own plans. He has his uh, own uh, agenda that is going on all around us. So uh, uh, now we have to look for which side are we going to be uh, playing, playing, the, um, playing our game or which side are we going to stand and how we can... <clears throat> play our game rightly. It's always the the what you call it like the dilemma of life or whatever it is. We always think about oh what's the right thing, what's the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Every day the society around us is trying to dictate terms. And one of the jobs, part of the jobs with the church is to be able to deal with whatever is happening in the world, yeah. there is a reason, there is a purpose for the church. Instead of just simply complying with the world, which we are not supposed to be, the Bible says, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So when, when, when you are not giving, when the church is not giving, a thought-provoking or a, a, a thought process that, that allows us to overcome the world's thought process, what are we doing as a church? Mm -hmm. So because some of these topics or some of the things that we may be dealing might be um, not comfortable. You know, they may not be comfortable. Yet it is required for us to deal with. A lot of the times these days, uh, some of the things that are being forced upon our children are not what we want to deal with them at a certain age. Yet, here we are, we have to deal with it. A boy comes to school, 
in an elementary school, or a kindergarten, or a something in that elementary level, the boy comes to school in a in a dress. Mm. And you are asked as a parent, what is that, mom? And you never thought of answering that. You never was prepared to answer that. Yet you are forced to. The innocence of our children is being stolen right from under our feet. We want to protect them. We want to be able to keep them and safeguard them in such a way they can enjoy life. Because we already know what it is to be an adult. Amen? Amen? But that is being stolen from them. That's the force, that's the nature of the society right now. And, and unfortunately, most of the Christian um, action is always a reaction rather than a proaction. Mm. We have to have some things that are prepared for God. So there are so many things that are happening around us. Before we can send our children to the schools, before we can send them out to the colleges, before we can send them out to the marriage or whatever it may be, whatever we are trying to send them to, the burden also falls on us to train them. Okay. And but for us to train them, you have to be trained as well. Mm. We can't give what we don't have. This is most of the times the problem. There is a mother that tries to rebuke uh, 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 her, her sons because they are using foul language, yet the mother, every other word is a foul word. How do you expect? You never learned how to overcome it, yet you are forcing it on the children. And, and, and unfortunately, what happened was the church Stop dealing with those things. Instead, the church is more interested in making people feel good. Jesus is never in the business of making you just feel good. Mm -hmm. He is in the business of making you deal with it and overcome it and then feel good about it. Mm -hmm. The goodness is a result because after God created everything, He saw what He created and He said it's good. Not before it went through the process. This is where most of the dreams live, uh, live as a dream uh, because you never went through the process to go on to the uh, other side and say, look what the Lord has done. This is so good. This is so good. But we are celebrating, oh, that is a beautiful dream. We are happy about it because that dream feels good. We are stopping there. This was when I was in college. I was preparing uh, um, the, for my engineering final year. Uh, well, I, I, I was. I had some. Um, the, unlike the system here, the system there in India, we have backlogs that I have to pick up. All these past years, these are not uh, when I was doing my college. It wasn't semesters. It was annual. So I was at a point where I had to do at one attempt. I have to write almost 25 subjects. The current, the past, everything combined. It's almost like that. Mm. And then I saw that, and I this is when, right before this, I got introduced to the power of God. I got introduced, this is exactly when I got born again. So now I am all psyched. I'm all excited. God is going to do miracles about it. And I'm, I'm going to testify how good God is. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit gives me a conviction. You're not doing anything for me to create a testimony already. You're just stopping at the dream. I'm just dreaming every day, thinking, hey, if only I, I, I ask all these things, I will be on the other side and glorifying God. God have done this thing. And when that correction has come from the Lord, I can't just dream about it. I have to walk in it. Mm. And when, when that have come into my life, I put myself to a ring that probably no other student has ever done. I probably ruined my stomach then. That's why spicy food doesn't bother me much. <laughs> I would eat in the nights 
in the nights before I would fall asleep, I would eat something super spicy and then drink a soda with it. It will not let you sleep. Trust me, if you ever need to stay out, that's a good medicine. That's not medicine, that's a poison. But anyway. But I put myself through that ringer so I can stay up and train up my lazy body to do the work it has to do. I would put myself under that ringer every day, every day, in and day out, consistently. I would do that again and again and again. And the time has come that I have to take the test. To God be all the glory that I was able to walk through all of them. Mm -hmm. The dream became my reality. What is missing in the church these days is we are just talking about the dreams. Mm -hmm. Nothing about how to make it a reality. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. This is no different than a soothsayer telling you something good is going to happen to you. The church have dumbed, dumbed it down so much that you are in that thing. Like you get, you get, you, you know, when you open, when you go to this Chinese restaurant, they give you a cookie. When you open it, they say something good about you. What well, we call them as fortune cookies. Mm. And I think the church have become that. Mm. Trying to give us a cookie wrapped with a small line that you can quote on Facebook or a, a line that you can feel good about yourself. Mm. Rather than teaching us how to deal with things. I'm going to promise you something to you. Maybe nobody did it. What you don't deal with, you will never overcome. Okay. It's impossible for you to overcome something you don't deal with. You have depression, deal with it. Until you deal with it, you will never overcome it. You have insecurity, deal with it. Until you deal with it, you will never overcome it. Most of the people are waiting for Jesus to fix them. When Jesus is trying to tell you, yes, I am fixing you, but I need you to walk through it. You got to face it. You got to walk with me. This is how I will get you through. And I, this is how I will allow you or help you overcome this. Remember, the Bible talks a whole lot about overcomers. The book of Revelation is full of that. He who overcomes. He who overcomes. Not for us to fall. Not for us to bow down. Not for us to give up. So I'm trying to, while I am uh, trying to come up with some kind of an inspiration, I also want to deal with something that is happening in and around our society. <clears throat> Out of your own mouth, I will judge you. That is the title of my message. Out of your own mouth, I will judge you. That's uh, um, Luke chapter 19, starting at verse 11. Luke chapter 19, starting at verse 11. Now they heard these things. <clears throat> he spoke another parable because he was near Jerusalem because they thought the kingdom of God would appear immediately. <laughs> Jesus is trying to break their thought pattern. Many times we expect a timeline. Part of humanness is we want it to be done in a timeline, in a timely fashion. What is a timely fashion? We are so good, so good, we, we get so used to these numberings. Let's say, if we say, okay, I'm celebrating the 10th anniversary. We are like, oh, wow, that's 10. What's wrong with 9? <laughs> no, we don't put that much of emphasis on 9. <coughs> 10, oh, that's a big achievement. We are trying to downsize. 
is the timelines. We want what we want. We feel good when this was to happen, when it happened. Instead of letting it happen when it should happen. There is no mother on this earth praying for a preemie. I just want to give birth to me and my child premature. Is there any mother who does that? Mm -mm. If somebody is doing that, we need to let them go and see the psychiatrist or whoever it is. <laughs> That's me they are mentally sick. The same thing that we do with God, when God is trying to bring to the fruition of things, we come in between and expect it to be done now. Mm. Immediately, immediately. So this was the expectation of the community there saying, I want the kingdom of God to appear immediately. I want it now, immediately. And then Jesus interjects them. How Jesus does, he's like, he's, he's, that's why I call him the boss man, right? He comes into a situation that nobody wants to deal with, and he comes into it and deals with it in such a way that you don't even know what he dealt with. After the end, all of it is over, everything is dealt and everything is coming together. So Jesus comes into their expectations. Have you ever allowed Jesus to come into your expectations? We will not, never, we have so much of a hard time to let Jesus rearrange our expectations. We want what we want. If it didn't happen, that's not God. <laughs> Therefore he said, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. He's a nobleman. He's a man of authority. He is in that line, in that lineage, where he could go and inherit something big, a kingdom. And not only when he inherits that he's going to inherit that, but his plan is to return back. This looks more like a Jesus thing. Mm. So he called ten of his servants. He called ten of his servants. Delivered to them ten miners and said to them, Do business till I come. Can somebody say till I come? Till I come. What was the instruction from Jesus? Till, till I, I come. come. Not when you want. Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me here? Till I come. He is coming through for sure. But you got to be there till he comes. He is coming through with your promise. He is coming through with your house. He is coming through with your job. He is coming through with your marriage. He is coming through with your answer. But till he comes, you best wait on him. Amen. Be busy with the business that he has entrusted you with. You know what is your business? Your business it is not about saving people. For you to guard your peace. For you to live in joy. For you to be living in the freedom of gospel. You have to be free. There, there shouldn't be any slavery. That is his business. We make his business to be the business of saving people. Most importantly, you need to keep your salvation in it. Yeah. When you are living in the salvation, the saving people is a byproduct. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen Jesus running a crusade? Mm -hmm. Wherever he went, crusades happened. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Wherever you go, people will be saved. Mm -hmm. Wherever you go, people will be healed. Because you are doing his business. Amen? Amen. But his citizens hated him. But I would like to call that as the world view. The citizens were hating him, hating the nobleman, the ruler over them. There are two groups here, you need to understand the same nobleman. One has, the group is servants, and the other group is the citizens. The citizens are hating the king or the nobleman. But the servants were given the minors. Now, and sent a delegation after 
after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. There is a very powerful statement that you need to understand what the society is trying to tell us every day. When, when I'm just taking an example of our nation, in God we trust. Now in science we trust. If science approves of God, then in God we trust. Are you with me here? Yeah. This is trying to reject the very foundation. Believe it or not, these citizens are owned by the nobleman. People don't understand that, that the Lord owns everything. He owns every single thing. And when he owns everything, how dare you say, you can no longer be my king. And now you are falling in line with them. When you are trying to buy their ideology. If someone was to come to you and tell you, hey, Jesus is not God, then you will argue with it. I'm sure most of the Christians would do that. But if that same world is coming in a disguise and trying to tell you that God has not been faithful to you, what is your fight? God hasn't answered your prayer. What is your fight? We will not have this man to reign over us. Somebody is buying that ideology. Somebody is buying that world view. And so it was that when he returned, <coughs> having received the kingdom, he then commanded these servants to whom he had given the money, money to be called to him that he might know how much every man had gained by how many of you believe Jesus lives in you? Amen. If you believe Jesus lives in you, you have been given the minus. Amen. You have been given those minus. And now the accountability day comes and the question would be, what did you do with it? Ooh. What did you do with them? Some of you don't even understand the will. Willpower that God has given you is a minor. The same willpower where Jesus was able to say that in the garden. Nonetheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Then came the first saying, Master, your miner has earned ten miners. You know, some of us Christians are not even aware of what Jesus has given. We call ourselves Christians and we don't know what he gave. What was the exchange on the cross? Oh, he died for me. There's a lot more than that. That is a Christian duty to find. What was that exchange done? What all did you give? Did you give me peace? Did you give me sound mind? Did you give me love? Did you give me joy? Did you give me peace that surpasses all understanding? Did you give me the power to get wealth? Did you give me the blessing of Abraham? Did you give me? Those are the things that you need to be finding out. Those are the things that you need to be fighting with. My weapons of warfare are mighty. Did you give them to me, God? Most of the Christians are looking for a gift. Oh, am I a prophet? Am I an evangelist? Am I an apostle? No, no, no. Why don't you find these minors that were given to you? He said to him, Well done, good servant. Because you are faithful in very little, have authority over ten cities. Can somebody say authority? Authority. He has the authority to transfer authority to you. Amen. 
You all know when the king is coming back, he is going to reign and he's going to reign with us. And when he is doing that, he has to have his servants whom he can trust with the authority. And but for that to happen, what do you do with your life now? Those are your minors. When that happens, I will do it. That's a lie. That will never happen. And the second came, saying, Master, your miner has earned five miners. Likewise, he said to him, You also be over five cities. Then another came, saying, Master, here is your miner back. Here is your miner back. Which I have kept, put away in a handkerchief. For I fear you, because you are an oh, austere man. You collect what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sow. Here is your, he never took ownership of what was given to him. Christian, I'm challenging you. Did you take ownership of what was given to you? Mm -hmm. That's why you're not converting. Conversion rate is not that high. Because you never took Ownership of this is mine if the Lord has given this to me. This is how, you know, for, uh, for me, growing up as, as, as a main denominational, one of the big denominational church members, I grew up in there. I never, uh, uh, we actually didn't uh, participate in praying in tongues. We also actually made a mockery of it. I grew up making fun of those people that would pray in tongues. But when I came to Christ and found out that is my father's, you know what I did? I didn't fight, I didn't argue, I just said that's mine. I walked into it. That is mine, I will have it. I took ownership. The Lord is looking for somebody who can take ownership of the stuff that God has delegated to us. You may not see that big house that you're looking for. You may not see that big plan that you're looking for. You may not see the big manifestations that you're looking for. You may not see the big ministry that you're looking for. But you always have those minds. What do you do with Amen? Amen. For I fear you a lack of understanding of your father. A lack of understanding of your master. Now, his decision making is driven by what? Fear. Fear. Where he should be driven by faith, he is now driving it by. So this is what happens many times. What the devil does is he puts that fear into you. One of the reasons why fear could come is through doubt. How am I saying the doubt? Because there are a group of people that are toppling this man from being the king or being the ruler. Now you sided with them thinking, oh, this man is no longer my master. The reality is he still is. You know, the reality check will happen to so many institutions in our nation. So many institutions that have pushed away God saying that God is not my Lord. He is no longer mine. He is no longer and he doesn't reign over us. They have pushed them away. Yet all of them will see the righteous judgment of God coming over them. They have done all these things. How they are legalizing certain things in our nation. Don't you, <clears throat> not for a minute you should be thinking they will be gone out of it scotch free. No. No, they will not. But I fear you because you are an austere man. You collect what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sow. And he said to him, out of your own mouth. I will judge you. Out of your own mouth, I will judge you. How am I going to be judged by God? Out of your own mouth. This is what the devil is after. The devil is always trying to make you say something 
make you make you confess something out of your mouth, I'm not good for anything. Now he is obligated to judge you out of your own mouth. You're setting a standard for yourself that is not godly just because you have gone through a process in your mind, in your thought process that is forcing you to say certain things automatically coming out of you that to which God has to judge you. Out of your own mouth I will judge you. You wicked servant. What is wickedness is clear here. What was given to him as an instruction? The instruction was, take this minor and make business with it until I come. What is the wickedness? No, you are a wrong master. You are a forceful master. You reap what you don't sow. So what am I going to do? I'm not going to touch it. Maybe the master would have been happy if he had just spent it. You knew that I was an austere man, collecting what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put my money in the bank, that at my coming I might have collected it with him? At least lend your talent and make something out of it. <laughs> you know, right now, the opportunity, many times what we are doing here is, he, the, the opportunity is destroyed right there. God has given him an opportunity, but that opportunity was completely destroyed because his mind is not there. His mind, his thought process purely out of his complaint. Out of his complaint. He, followed, he fell in line with this, this ideology, this mindset of double-mindedness. His mindset went in that line and because of that, he lost his opportunity. That's why it's important with whom do we side, what kind of a thought process we side with makes a difference whether you will become the Lord's or you will become somebody who lost the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Every day God is trying to give us an opportunity. He is giving us an opportunity every uh, the moment you have become a Christian. It's an opportune time. That's why God declares now. Now is the time. This is the day that the Lord has made. Now is the opportune time. When is the best time for me to do this now? Amen. 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 And he stood, he said to those who stood by, take the mine up from him and give it to him who has ten mines. 25th verse. But they said to him, Master, he has ten miners. This is one of the conflicts of the society these days. The argument between equity and equality. Equity asks for an equal outcome. Equality asks for an equal opportunity. That is one of the biggest prevalent things that, are, that is in the society right now. Everybody is complaining about their life because they don't have the outcome as the other person. Life itself is an opportunity. When God has given this opportunity, what did we do with it? How did we transform it? That is how you bring, uh, uh, bring the results out of your life. The equality of your life is God loves all of us. God died for all of us. Who is going to take advantage of it and not take advantage of it? Many people are trying to falsely preach these days. No matter who you serve, you're still going to heaven because God loves you. No, that's a lie. You are propagating an equity gospel, not equality gospel. 
This is true, so true in the societies these days. Young people are so caught up in this thing. They didn't get this, this opportunity. They are not here. They are not there. How do you complain about it without learning what are their habits? Financially, if you have to be in a higher level, it is defined by your habits, not by your inheritance. I know people who have inherited millions and became paupers. When you don't know what to do with it, nothing matters. That's why the complaint now in our society is all about, all about equity, equity. Why don't I get it? Why don't I get it? What did you do to get it? And the young minds are being spoiled every day. That you have to have an equal outcome. No, you don't. See here how Jesus deals with it. In, a, in, in your mind, you think like, man, this guy only has, this guy has ten. Now I don't want to give him one more. But Jesus does the opposite. Mm -hmm. And I see somebody when the church is doing all well, some people are like, oh, I'm not going to give it to the church. They're all well. They don't need it. Let me give it to the poor church. Mm -hmm. That is not God's mind. That is not God's mind. Amen? Amen. You're asking, asking God to reward you with equity when God is trying to, when God has already rewarded you with equality. He gave you that opportunity. He gave you the same spirit. He gave you the same elements that anybody and everybody can have. The same elements that resurrected Jesus. The same power that resurrected Jesus lives in you. What do you do with it? Are you still complaining? Sitting in the, in the complaint which is ruining your opportunity. Amen. If somebody is going, somebody is looking for the opportunity, I'm here to challenge you all. The opportunity is already upon you. It's about how you receive that. Now when this guy says that, everybody complained to him saying, Master, he has ten minus, why are you giving him the eleventh? Now Master answers beautifully. But I say to you, that to everyone who has, will be given. Because he knows how to hold it. He knows how to keep it. He knows how to utilize it. He knows how to multiply it. That's why God trusts more. Amen? Amen. If you want God to trust you more, do what you have to do with what is being given. How much can you distribute yourself? How much can you multiply yourself? How much that can be going out of you? Oh, Lord, if only I have a million dollars, I give away everything I got. I'm like, oh, you have ten dollars. What you doing with that? Yeah. You got a quarter? What you doing with that? Yeah. If you have a struggle giving away a quarter, let me tell you very clear, you will have even more struggle to give away a hundred thousand. <laughs> If you want to be faithful after you are an adult, no, you can't. You should start now. You know, there was a challenge that God has given. I was like, I, when I came to the uh, uh, Lord and, and abstained from all these, all these activities, with, with, uh, 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 intimate activities and all that, I'm purifying myself with the Lord. And as I was going through, the temptation hits me so hard. And when the temptation hits me hard, I go to the Lord and pray, God, give me a wife so I don't fall into this temptation. God, give me a wife, give me a wife. I've been praying and the Lord had to rebuke me almost. Even if I give you a wife, your temptation will not leave you. Which is so true. I'm happily married for 15 years, yet the temptation still tries to now. But if I have not learned how to overcome them, that is why marriages are full of these adulterous activities. I 
But you have never learned how to exercise self-control then. It will be hard for you to do that now. The young people need to be taught, you know, all these options that are giving safe, safe uh, sex. I'm not, I have to deal with it as a church. This is not nothing safe. God has already given a safe standard. Stay till you marry. Stay mm -hmm. till you get married. Mm -hmm. And that's when you have an opportunity to the world. But look, look, he says, but they said to him, Master, he has ten talents, ten minus, for I say to you, you, that to everyone who has will be given. Everyone who has to him will be given. Amen? Everything is pros prospering in my hands. You got to take ownership of that. Everything that I touch will prosper. Everywhere I, I my foot treads, it will prosper. Everywhere I go, people will listen to the gospel. Everywhere I go, I'll be able to preach the gospel through my life. Everywhere I go, I will have success. Then I lay hands on the sick, they will recover. That's taking ownership, y'all. When we take ownership of those things and when we are operating in it and when we are willing to lay hands on the sick and see the power of God flow through us, that's opportunity fully utilized. Everyone who has will be given. And from whom who does not have, even what he has will be taken away from. What a fool. He thought he was doing God a favor. Are you with me on that? He thought he was doing his master a favor by keeping it. But he says, you know what? I'm going to take that away too. You unfaithful servant. And then he says, look, the wisest that have come, I want you to understand something. What well, up? Uh, but bring here those enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them. Slay them before me. Are you, are you, are you, uh, 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 are you listening here? Okay, see. What is your dealing with his enemies? We are being friends with his enemies. What is an enemy to God, you are befriending it. That is what we are doing as a church. That is what we are doing as a society. We are trying to comply and comply and comply. For the sake of this fake peace. And the process, in the process of it, what are you doing? You are building yourself to be an enemy unto the Lord. If the God, if God is calling something wrong, what do you say? It is wrong. If God is saying this is sin, what do you say? It's sin. sin. We are not here to appropriate sin. Amen. Amen. We don't appropriate adultery. We don't appropriate homosexuality. We don't appropriate life because they are sin. Amen. 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 And we cannot do that. We cannot have friendship with the enemies because. You know why? Bring here those enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them and slay them before me. Every system that has rejected God and rejected the authority of Jesus Christ will be coming to a punishment very soon in the name of Jesus. Every system, every organization that has denied God and the right of God, every system will, bring, will be broken down. Everything will come down. Institutions will be falling apart. The financial structures will be falling apart. How dare you say that to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? I'm warning you, church, you better not side with them. This, I believe, God is giving us a leg up. Get out from amongst them. The same way God has given his grace for Lot. Get out from Sodom and Gomorrah before I destroy everything. It's not new for him to destroy and to rebuild. Mm -hmm. Are you with me here? Mm -hmm. 
This time he is going to destroy and not rebuild here. He is building a new heaven and a new earth. That's where we are invited to. Don't you dare sit with a system that have rejected God. Don't you try to make it work. Make it functional. Make it go on. Come. Be a person. Be bold enough to reject it. Don't try to appropriate. This is one of the things that is so heavy on our heart. Because it is hitting children so much. They're trying to enforce this transgenderism and making it normal. I'm here to tell you it's a mental sickness. Yeah. One, it's a spiritually wrong thing. It's a demonic oppression, demonic possession. If anything, pray for them to be set free from that demonic ideology. Amen. Not for you to sit down and say, oh, it's okay, it's one way of life. No, it's not. Okay. That's an abomination to the Lord. So he is about But God spared the nation with adultery, but with this sort of a lifestyle where they forced it upon the children, those places have been destroyed. We gotta be very careful. I'm telling you, every one of us, we gotta be very, very careful. The Lord is giving us an opportunity to mature in our thinking, to want us to be able to think like Him. Think in a, such a way that we take care of the opportunity that God is giving us. Our children are an opportunity for us. Amen. 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 God trusts you with your children, you know that? Mm -hmm. You know they belong to Him, not to you. The society every day wants them. Every day the society is trying to force them to be theirs. They belong to us. The other day I heard a chanting from this so-called parades. And we are coming after your children. No, you're not. The devil is alive. We rebuke that idea. We rebuke that voice. We rebuke those voices that are trying to come after our children in the name of Jesus. Yeah, right. Only the voice of God, the love of God will prosper in our children. Even myself, if I am not bringing God's love, God's plan into their life, I'll ask God, exit me out. I rather than grow with and for the Lord, not for me, not for the society. Amen. 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 I'm going to end it with this scripture. First Corinthians 13, 1 reads like this. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Nobody did that to this person, but that person did it to himself. Maybe today we should ask ourselves that question. I think that that, that that man that received, that servant that received the one liner and said, no, I'm not going to, I think it's like a childish thing. Who doesn't have an understanding of their Lord. I'm here asking you, to think about, am I my understanding am I, as it growing in the Lord or not? I just want to end with this uh, uh, these statements quickly. Out of your complaining, you are giving birth to God's complaint against you. Out of your own mouth, I will judge you. You're complaining, what are you complaining? Can you turn your complaint into a praise? At that same time, when you feel like complaining, turn around. Lord, I give you thanks for you are faithful. For you love me right now, right here. Oh, my life is a mess. My life is a misery. Instead of that, turn around. Thank you, Lord, for your great love is toward me. Yes, God. That you never leave me nor forsake me. Is, 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 this is a question. Is God's plan for you? Is, is it equity? Equality of outcome? Or equality? Equality of opportunity. Our children need to grow up with this idea. They need to know. God is not in the equity business. He is in the equality business. For the outcome to be turned right like this. He's like, no, 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 what is your effort? I know I have a favor for you, but what is you doing? What are you doing? 
achievements, our goals, our gold, our silver, none of those things match the king. In any instance of your time, anywhere you are in, give him a hallelujah. Yes. Shout a hallelujah. Praise him right in the middle. Thank you, Jesus. That lets him know he is the king over your life. That lets your trouble know that Jesus is the king over your trouble. Yes. That lets your family know that Jesus is your king. The king deserves your hallelujah. Amen. Give it from the heart of you. From the center of your heart. Lord, I praise you. I give you a hallelujah. And let me turn it around for you.
Our children, Father, especially, as they're getting ready to go back to school, say, Yeshua, 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 be their Lord. Be their master. Be with them when they go. Be with them when they go. Be with them, oh God. Guard them. We cannot do it, but you, O oh Lord. Be, oh, be the Lord over our children, God. Be the Lord over our children. Hallelujah.